In Rwanda is expected to discuss the future of the UN peacekeeping force in South Sudan. The Rwandan government says that the latest conflict in the world's newest nation will be given priority when African leaders meet in Kigali this week. The mandate of the United Nations mission for South Sudan will expire at the end of the month. But there are proposals for an extension until the end of August. Clashes last week in the capital Juba left more than 270 people dead and several of them homeless. The African Union is expected to support the proposal by the East African Regional Bloc, IGAD, to have a combat force in South Sudan. That proposal will then be forwarded to the United Nations Security Council for authorization. African countries are likely to contribute more troops in addition to the 13,500 soldiers and police on the ground. Nothing is off the table uh, for the leaders uh, that will be gathered here in Kigali to do everything possible first uh, to make sure that the people of South Sudan have protection and two to try and get the political process back on track. Uh, so whether it's intervention, uh, military, political. During the summit, Rwanda will play host to President Omar al-Bashir of Sudan, who is wanted by the International Criminal Court to face crimes against humanity and genocide charges allegedly committed in the Darfur region. Rwanda has termed the demand by the International Criminal Court to arrest Bashir as a distraction. Rwanda is not a signatory to the Rome Statute, which governs the conduct of the court. Anybody who is invited by the African Union will be here in Kigali and will be very welcome, will be under the protection of uh, this country as, as uh, should be customary. The meeting will also elect six new commissioners and a new chairperson to replace Dr. Nkosazana Lamini Zuma, who steps down after serving one term. During the summit, African heads of state will launch a common African e-passport, which will be issued to all AU citizens by 2018. From there, each country, each member state of the African Union will be working out practical modalities to start delivering those passports in each one of the countries. Trade between African countries is only 11 percent. The launch of the passport is expected to boost the free movement of people and goods across the continent, in effect boosting inter-African trade. Sarah Kemani, SABC News, Kigali, Rwanda. Well, still in Rwanda, AU chairperson Dr. Nkosazan Dlamini Zuma has warned against the use of media to fuel conflict in Africa. Dlamini Zuma was addressing an African editors forum in Kigali on the sidelines of the summit as the AU fights to silence guns on the continent. The organization has appealed to the media to refrain from taking sides during conflicts. We also have seen recently Journalists who have played negative roles. And since we are in Rwanda, maybe I'll use Rwanda as an example. At uh, 22 years ago, Radio uh, Milkolin and the Kangaroo newspaper had journalists and editors who crafted, disseminated, and rolled out an agenda of hatred incited and instigated the population to perpetuate violence, cross human rights violations and genocide against their neighbors and fellow Rwandans. 22 years later, the memories are still very fresh. I visited the memorial here. I, I always visit it when I'm here. And it's still, sometimes I go thinking this time, I'll, I'll, I'll be fine, but I still cry when I go through that memorial. And to think that journalists were part of that agenda is a shame. Well, the situation in South Sudan is...